In the world of ultra slim 120mm fans, it will never be perfect. And how could it? You are working with a fan which is already pretty small, but now you're also slicing it into almost half its original thickness. So no matter how you twist it, 50mm thick fans or 50mm thick 120mm fans have a huge disadvantage and it's hard to optimize them for basically anything. Yeah, but Nokia still tried. This is the Nokia NF-A12X15, the 15mm version of the iconic all-rounder fan. This thing exists in three different versions. The PWM version of today, another called Flex or FLX, which just means that the 4-pin PVM plug is replaced by a 3-pin voltage controlled one and the Chromex Black version. Other than that, this thing is as Nokia as it gets. We get that iconic Nokia brown color for the impeller. The rest of the frame is painted in a little bit less brownish color. The 20cm PVM cable is nicely braided and this thing is just optimized AF. The motor hub or the SSO2 bearing is reinforced with metal. We got flow acceleration channels on the fan wings, the stepped inlet design when air goes in, the micro indentations on the inner side of the frame, and even the box is full of Nokia power. Open it up on both sides and you will get an overview of why you are paying that price and Inside it just goes on, the fan itself, a 30 centimeter long PVM extension, a nicely braided splitter, Noxia's anti-vibration mountings, as well as regular case screws, and Noxia's RPM limiter. I mean, okay, if they think the diet wasn't enough of a debuff, then sure, let's cripple everything. As a package, you will get a, a Noxia level of treatment, that's 100% sure. Spec-wise, it's a 50mm fan, so keep that in mind. It is spinning at max 1850 RPM. We got up to 55.4 CFM at up to 1.53 mm of H2O. So actually, considering the thickness, it doesn't look that bad. Now, before we continue to the benchmarks, unlike the name would suggest, this is not a really thin version of a NFA12X25. The impeller design is very, very different. Now we got seven very thin blades with a random seeming ring going around the central shaft for some reason. But most importantly, this is not LCP. One of the biggest advantages of the original or the NFA12X25, uh, one of the things that it brought to the table was the usage of LCP. Hence the minimal tolerances that Noctua was able to achieve and thus maximize its performance. Here it's just regular old turtle joker, so the gaps are going to be bigger. Which doesn't necessarily mean that it's bad, so let's take a look at that. We benchmark fans in two different ways. Once on our case simulator, a wooden box where we use two fans to recycle the air within and measure the results by looking at the CPU temperature underneath a passive Noxia P1. And for radiators, we blew through a 10 FPI 80mm radiator and we measured the performance by calculating the water temperature above ambient. For both of these, we first test the max performance and then we slowly lower the fan speed whilst noting down the noise to create a noise to performance curve. Letting the NFA12X15 spin at its max 1850 RPM on our case simulator allowed the CPU to stay at a cozy 45.5 degrees C above ambient, which isn't that bad after all. It outperforms the P12 and P14 slims, which congrats, and it's a bit behind the Kaze Flex 2 Slim. Compared to the NFA12X25, yeah, the step down is of course just huge, but this was also absolutely to be expected. But something you might notice uh, is that things like the S12A, S12B, F12 were all outperformed by a slim A12. And I know this might look weird on the graph, it really does, but actually raw spec-wise or raw spec sheet-wise, this makes sense. The F12 pushes less air than the A12X15, and both the S12A and B do push slightly more, yes, but with a lot less force. But the thing that the S12s have on their side is noise. The noise to performance graph for the A12X15 doesn't look bad at all, don't get me wrong. In the top 100 to 60% of its max speed, it performs roughly like the Kaze Flex 2 Slim. But the S12A is already at, at a much, much better point when, when it starts. That thing is basically noise floor from the get-go. The thing that made me wonder, however, 
in the lower speeds, the A12X15 did underperform compared to the competition. Both the P12 Slim and Kaze Flex did whoop the A12X15's ass once everything was spinning slower. And as a great reference, we have the A12X25. Not that you should expect this level of performance, but we need to put things into perspective. And at the end of the day, a 15mm thick fan just would never keep up with a 25mm good one. And what about radiators? Well, pretty much the same thing. At max, the A12X15 managed to keep the water at 14.3 degrees C above ambient, which isn't a bad result at all. Still better than a bunch of other fans, which, uh, yeah, that's more their fault than Noctua's. And on a apples to apples comparison, we got pretty much the same position, outperforming the P12 Slim quite heavily and still behind the Kaze Flex 2 Slim. Compared to the thicker version, of, of course, it's going to be the same brutal huge step down. The noise to performance graph for radiators changed a lot though. Now the A12X15 is significantly better than both the P12 Slim and the Kaze Flex Slim from start to finish. The, no doubt, this is just significantly better. And here we got the reference A12X25 value, just so you know what is actually possible. To my very surprise, this is much more of a radiator fan than a case fan, if you compare it to the other slim 120mm fans that we have in house. And to some degree it does make sense, Nokia has never called this to, to be a case fan, they never did. But they have used it on some of their coolers, specifically the ones that are made for SFF cases. And even if a heatsink doesn't equal a radiator or the needed static pressure is not the same, radiators still need more, it is definitely much more comparable than a case. On the flip side, it's not like they suck for cases. The Kaze Flex 2 Slim is indeed a bit better, but only at the highs and lows. For everything in between, they are pretty much identical. Now, one thing that I do want to point out about this, the build quality is just phenomenal. For every other 15 mm fan, the reducing or the reduced thickness of the fan has taken basically all rigidness away. But not here. Sure, I can, I can still squeeze it to make the fan stop, but I, I need to squeeze like really, really hard. And for example, on a P12 Slim or P14 Slim, I, I can squeeze it by looking at it. So compared to the other ones, this is a tank. Sure, it's still far, 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 far away from the thicker X25, but considering what this is, not bad. But what about the price? Well, to my surprise, slicing the frame also meant slicing the price. You can get one of these for about 22 to 24 euros, depending on if you want the eye cancer color or eye candy color. So this is still everything but a affordable fan, but I'm just happy that they didn't like put on the 30 euros price tag like the A A12X25, because why not? So at least we got that. But at the end of the day, if you are about to build a mini PC featuring some water cooling and you need something to cool down the water, so far the A12X15 is the best option of the slim ones that I am aware of. But okay, this should be all for Noctua and their NF A12X15 in its glorious brown color scheme. And at this point a huge thank you to Noctua for sending it over. Oh, on a side note, we have a Discord server, so if you want to join, the link is down below. And we got channel membership, so if you are planning to sell your soul for an RG poop emoji, that's one way to go. But if not, I'm also releasing the content to all members two or three weeks in advance. Except for the NDA stuff, because, you know, I, I don't want to get sued. Additionally, can rest assured that the income will not only keep the channel afloat, but it will also serve to develop a new price specification for fans. Because at 1.5 euros per millimeter, the A12X15 is much more expensive than the 1.2 euros per millimeter that the X25 will cost, and Nokia should work on that. Anyway, thank you for watching and if you want to continue, have a look at our take on the Kaze Flex 2 in its diet version. It might not be as good as this one on radiators, but for cases, it can still keep up. Thank you for watching and hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.